Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out my channel today and I'm back in the garage. I'm working on a mower for a customer and his complaint is that his PTO shuts off after a period of time. Also, his fuse blows occasionally that powers the entire tractor. There is a main fuse. I'll show that to you in a second here. So we got the mower, we tested it out and although the PTO works to some extent, um, there is an internal short so this is a problem that some of them may have and you might be experiencing. So basically your symptoms, if you have a simplicity like this one, which you see it's a Regent, it's a 24H. Uh, that's what the hood looks like there. It's a 2007, it's a part number 2690576. It has a 24 horse engine on it. Although this one's been replaced and now it has a 23. This guy mows about six acres and if he goes from the front of the property to the back of the property he can only make like three passes and then it shuts off the PTO. This is what happened the first time. Whenever I went over and checked it out, the fuse had been blown on it. I pulled the fuse, I put a new fuse in, it started, it ran. I told him that it might have just overheated. He tried to mow with it and at that point the PTO shut off. I checked for shorts in the wiring, I checked everything, and there wasn't any problems with that. It's just that the clutch has wore to the point it has an internal short of some kind, or when it gets too hot, it shuts off. Now, there are adjustments that can be made, and you can check other videos on YouTube, to the clutch to where you can set the air gap with a feeler gauge. That's not the case with this one. The air gap is fine. That's the first thing I went to but it still shuts off after you've mowed with it just a short time. What I did was I bypassed the switch, the PTO switch, because whenever your clutch, your PTO clutch is starting to go bad, it will burn out the factory switch. And I'm talking about the knob that you pull, the yellow knob on the dash. It'll burn that out, it'll melt it, or it causes it to fail internally. So you're gonna have to spend 15, 20 dollars and get a new switch. The problem with that is that new switch is not gonna last very long because that clutch will heat up and get to the point where it will short and cause that switch to go bad again, like in this case, which we kind of knew that might have been the case. So what I did in this instance is I took the switch, I bypassed the main part of the switch that actually turns on the blades, I connected the switch to the rest of the wiring to allow the safeties to work, because the switch has to be plugged in for the mower to start and run and continue to start and run. However, the part that actually turns on the blades is the part that fails. So I bypassed that with a separate switch, but I plugged the PTO switch in to allow the tractor to start and run. After mowing just a short period of time, it shuts off the PTO and it may blow the fuse. So I already ruled out the switch. I know that the switch needs replaced but I also know that a new switch is just going to burn out again. So at this point, I've got to replace the clutch. Let me show you what that looks like. Here's the clutch. It's a 1687296SM. It's an electric clutch. It's an original Briggs & Stratton. And these are all the parts that you get. This is the main assembly itself. Here's a pulley assembly. Here's a little jumper. Here's a nut. Here's a brace. Here's a bolt for the brace, here's for the crankshaft, here's a lock nut, a tie to keep uh, the wires up off of anything that moves. So this is what you get. I'm going to put the link down below. Click the link. If you're having this problem that I described, pick up the clutch, replace, and everything will be fine. I'm going to show that to you. What I'm going to do is put this new clutch on. I'm going to show you the old clutch. Okay, so we're going to go under the dash here. I got a light already in place. And if you don't know, your mower has a main fuse that goes in here. Now this one is blown, so I'm waiting for another one to be delivered here. If this fuse is blown, the tractor will not start. It will not click. It will not turn on the lights. It won't do anything. This fuse has to be in place for the tractor to operate. Now if this fuse doesn't blow, the PTO still could be causing a problem with the PTO switch, causing it to fail or maybe not fail, but the PTO clutch itself could be overheating and shutting off. 
now we're at the back of the tractor and you can see I have the safety switch out of the seat and I have it zip stripped down so it's depressed. The reason you do that is you don't want that switch to have failed because if that switch fails randomly you're going to have a problem because it's going to shut off the PTO. There has to be an occupant on the seat with the key on in the on position for that PTO to work. So if that switch is bad in the seat you're not possibly going to have your PTO coming on. So don't misdiagnose your PTO being bad when it could just be the seat switch. Now with me having that seat switch wired up the way that I do, I know for a fact that it's being depressed and it's still not allowing power to go to the PTO clutch. So let's go ahead and put this new one on and I'll show you what it looks like then. Before I tear off the old clutch, I want to show you a couple of things because I'm sure I have a lot of people that are wondering, how did I bypass that factory switch? Here's the factory switch. I've pulled it out of the dash and then I reinserted it into the plug under the dash. And it's plugged in just like you would think the switch would have been, all except for these two wires, which I did what they call a back probe, and I've pushed them in the back side of the PTO switch harness and ran them up to another switch. So this switch here, all it does is provides positive power through that cable and the way it does that is it connects the positive wire that is running up to the plug whenever the key's on there's power to it and it allows that power to go down to the PTO switch so what that does is allow the other safety connections to be made whenever this switch is pulled like that then when you want the PTO to actually engage to test it out you can pull this now the only reason you would need to do that is if this switch has gone bad, which I know this switch is bad, but I didn't want to spend $15, $20 on another switch to have it go out again, trying to test the PTO. Now I have the tractor up in the air, supported on the crane, and I just want you to get a good look of what it looks like underneath the mower. The reason I'm doing this is I know a lot of you don't have a crane accessible and you're going to be doing this in your driveway with the deck off. As long as you have enough distance to pull that bolt out of the crankshaft, you should be okay. I am going to use an impact to pull it off, but I'm not going to show you step by step. There's other videos that are online that already do that. I'm just going to show you what it looks like here before I take it off and then I'll show you the new one. All right, I got the old clutch off. Let's compare it with the new clutch because there are some differences. The first thing I noticed with the new one is this snub that's sticking up here. That's not on the old one. The old one is flush. It's actually recessed. But it looks like that that's an improved design feature because this actually fits up into the drive pulley a little further. They give you a drive pulley with the kit and you can see there's a recess here and a lip. So I was concerned when I saw this if it would work with the old drive pulley. Well, if you look at the old drive pulley, it has that same recess and a lip inside. And when compared to the new pulley, it's the same height, the same diameter, the same depth for the belt to ride, the same distance on the snubs. Everything's the same. So it looks like that the clutch, if you don't want to change your drive pulley, or if your drive pulley's stuck on the engine, which it could be, you can just go ahead and put this new clutch on there and it'll work just fine. The other problem is this end is obviously not the same as what I took off. This is what I took off. So that's why they include this jumper wire to convert it over to this end here. Another difference is this right here. What this is, is the brace that bolts to the bottom of the engine and the bottom of the frame underneath and this tab then goes into the hole on the clutch to keep the clutch stationary whenever you engage it. This is the thing that keeps it from spinning and twisting your wire completely off. So you got to have this obviously on here. You can see that they're the same as far as the holes concerned on the PTO. However, the difference is that this one being flat and like a bar stock where the stock one that's on the tractor. It's round. You can see that's totally different. And I'll show you why they made it the flat style now. The reason they went to this flat one is so that there's more surface area 
holding this from spinning. Because as you turn this PTO on and off, there's always movement, plus the blades are slacking up sometimes, or there's more tension or less tension. So this is always kind of banging around in here. So you need as much surface as you can against this hole to keep this from spinning as you turn it on and off and as it's running and it's being jerked around. You can see what's happening to the factory style. That round bar is wearing out a spot on that hole because the contact surface is so small. So although I could just go ahead and bolt this new clutch on, and it would probably be fine for another eight years, I'm gonna go ahead and do the upgrade and put this bar piece in place of that round stock so we'll get a little bit better holding power on this clutch and it possibly won't wear out prematurely like this one because this potentially could have cracked and broke. This should keep that from happening. Another big difference between the two and I failed to mention earlier was that there's a keyway that is on the shaft that is separated from the original PTO clutch. This one has the keyway built into it. So make sure you take out that old one and get rid of it because the new one doesn't need it. All right, so I got the new clutch on there. Let me show you what that looks like real quick. You can see that this bar stabilizer for the PTO clutch actually goes into this open slot right here. The wire goes in here. I've got it secured to the other hole that's right here. And then I've run the lead, since it's so long, all the way up into the frame. Instead of it connecting below, I made it connect up above. I'll show you that. Here's the lead that's coming out from below. Like I said, it's really long. Then I have that jumper wire that they provide you to convert it over to the old style connector. And I brought this connector up from below because it used to connect down below. Now what I'm going to do is just secure these up with a wire tie. Do the same underneath like I showed you there. You don't want this dropping down and rubbing on a belt or a steering or something like that to where it can get pinched. So I'm going to secure this up and uh, reconnect the deck and the belt and we'll go from there. All right, so I got it all back together. You can see there I took it out in mode and it works fine. So going back and recapping what I had said, if you have one of these mowers or a mower similar to this and your blades just quit working one day and you check the air gap on your clutch and it is set correctly, then at that point you may want to look at your safety switch on your seat or also the PTO switch. Now if the PTO switch is bad, it could be that the clutch also is bad and caused the PTO switch to burn out. So you've got to be careful with what you're buying and do the simple things first. You probably want to get a multimeter. You want to check to see if there's voltage going to the switch. You want to see if there's voltage coming out of the switch. If there's voltage coming out of the switch, all is good. And you'll check that down at the PTO clutch. That just means your PTO clutch is bad. However, if you're not getting any voltage out of your switch, then you know your switch is bad, but you've got to figure out why it went bad. And it could be that it's the clutch. So plan on spending the kind of money that we did here. You're looking at it probably close to $300 total between the switch and the clutch. Again, I'm going to put the link down below for the clutch. Click the link. It'll take you right to it. You'll get it shipped to you right away. And hopefully this will help you out. I appreciate it. If you like this video, click like or subscribe. And I'll try to get more on this like it. Thanks. Bye.